Sweet School on RealArtCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. Peter Johnson at RealAgriculture.com and not again, gosh, I got to talk about nitrogen on wheat. So here we are, it's the 20th of March in Ontario and I'm getting tweets from Prince Edward Island saying, hey Pete, you're out here and talked about wheat. What about putting my nitrogen on my, my wheat now? I'm getting, I'm getting emails from Eastern Ontario on shallow soils with lakes everywhere saying, is it time to put my nitrogen on my wheat? Getting questions from Southwestern Ontario. Give your head a shake. There is no benefit, none, zero, nada benefit to putting nitrogen on wheat until it greens up. Once it greens up, then absolutely, we need some nitrogen to support that growth. But right now, if you put it on, they're forecasting snow for crying out loud on Easter weekend. If we get into those conditions and the worst, the worst, bar none, Kyle from Prince Edward Island tweets me this picture. And he says, my wheat's starting to green up. Well, when you actually look at the picture, what he's looking at is a whole bunch of dead leaves and he's spreading them apart. And there's a little bit of green down in the base of the plant. That's not green up. Green up is when the crop actually starts to grow when you drive past it and it looks green again after all those leaves kind of disappear. So it's not at green up. Meanwhile, when you see in the background of the picture, is water. I don't know if it's a lake or, the, or it's the Atlantic Ocean or it's whatever, but boy, if you spread nitrogen on there and then it's still frozen soil, you get, you get a rain, that stuff moves into the water. It's all bad, bad, bad. The only people, the absolute only people that can put nitrogen on wheat on the frost in March are the people who planted ultra late. So Grey Bruce Peninsula, the Niagara Peninsula, both of those areas, super wet last fall. Guess what? They have late planted wheat, no tillers, zero. In fact, some of the wheat wasn't emerged. It's emerged now. It has one, two, maximum three leaves. In that situation, a little bit of nitrogen, 50 pounds tops. You put that on to stimulate some early spring tillering and we'll tolerate that. The risk is low. If the wheat doesn't make it, if it moves off target, it's not huge. But going out there this early, it's all bad. It's not going to increase yield. It increases your risk tremendously. Just get over it. Last point on the whole nitrogen thing is we're gonna add in sulfur now. So sulfur is a required element and I get lots of questions. Do I need to split my sulfur? How much sulfur do I need? Just be really careful. Ammonium thiosulfate, what we've really learned is that ammonium thiosulfate heats 28% up dramatically. So you see that leaf burn from 28%, that's bad enough. You add it in a bunch of, of ammonium thiosol, you're gonna see more leaf burn. It's hotter than 28. The big problem there is if we split our sulfur, so we're gonna go 28 and ammonium thiosulfate mid-April, which is the right time on decent wheat to start nitrogen, mid-April, yeah, we'll see a little leaf burn. It's so short, it doesn't matter. We go back in there, if we split apply, we go back in there on the 10th, the 15th of May, and now we have ammonium thiosulfate in there. The burn is just, I think it's way too much risk from that standpoint. I think we want to put all the sulfur in that situation on in the first application. The second application is only going to be 28%. A little bit different story with dry because of course dry doesn't burn. We don't need to get into that. Having said that, for goodness sakes, if you have decent wheat at all, no nitrogen, none, till at least we get into April and mid-April, April 20th is way better. Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete, realagriculture.com. Get this wheat thing right. <laughs>